In today's video, I am going to teach you two cute games that you can play on dates to develop more attraction. Listen, the number one thing that you need to do when you're on your dates and even in your relationships to develop attraction, believe it or not, is humor, laughter. And if you don't believe me, go check out some videos from Russell Brand, the British comedian. This guy is an absolute riot. And women, you can see when the, he's being interviewed by a woman or he's interviewing women, you can see their attraction build over the first few minutes because he makes them laugh. So that's what this video is about. And I'm going to share two cute games that I do on my first dates. All right. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Kane. I'm the Silver Bachelor. This channel is 100% dedicated to dating advice for older guys. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button and a notification button because I'm dropping a video every day. All right. How to develop attraction on your first dates is key. The key is laughter. All right. And it's not really about the looks. It's not about your job. It's not about how much money you have and the car you drive, the big watch you're wearing, any of that. Really, it all comes down to humor and making them laugh their ass off. So, so I'm going to share these two games that I play on the first few dates to break the ice and get them laughing. Okay, so without further ado, these are the two games. Game number one is all about the five love languages. So if you guys have not heard of the five love languages, then damn, you're living under a rock. And I will tell you this, every single woman, young, old, doesn't matter, knows about the five love languages. And in fact, they know what their top love languages are, and they can guess what the man's top love languages are. But you need to memorize what these five love languages are because every woman will resonate with this conversation. But most importantly, once you know the five love languages, which I'm going to share with you, then you need to know what are your top ones to make sure there's some alignment. So game number one, the five love languages. So I, before I tell you this, the, the, this game, I'm going to go read off what the five love languages are. Okay. So the five languages, love languages are time, touch, words, gifts, and service. I'm abbreviating all those. They're a little bit longer, like physical touch, quality time, words of affirmation, gifts, and uh, acts of service, okay? But those are the five. And I know what my top three are. So my top three are words, touch, and time, okay? So here's how the game goes. The game goes is as you're having a, you know, a few minutes into the conversation, whatever, you're having a couple drinks, whatever, I say, hey, just out of curiosity, what are your top three love languages? And of course, they're going to tell me whatever those three are, right? So I'm looking for two things. One, I'm going to set up this game. And, and two, I'm looking to see if there's compatibility with me. So I mentioned to you that mine are words, touch, and time. So if the woman doesn't say touch in her top three, that's a yellow flag for me. And it's a red flag. I'm just going to be honest here. It's a red flag if the only things in her top three are like gifts, service, and words. So it's, it's like, oh, okay, so you just want to be worshipped, right? You don't want to spend time with me, and you don't want to, you don't care about physical touch, which, by the way, any woman that says those three, and I, I apologize in advance if I'm offending any of the women watching this, that they say words, gifts, and service. So if touch and time are not in that top three, they, they make, they would make some, to, they would be very good escorts because escorts don't want to spend time with you and they just want to, they just want to get out and they don't care about the sex. Really. They're just doing it for the money and the uh, attention. So I'm not saying that every woman is an escort if she's got those three, but I'm saying it's a massive red flag to me because that means she doesn't want to spend time with me and she doesn't care about me touching her. So the game, so the game is this, I came across this post on social media, on Instagram. And it says, it shows from this person's, uh, from this person's opinion, what the five love, love languages actually mean. So you don't have to take a picture of this, but you can just write this down, right? 
So, the, but it's better to find this online if you go what the five love, language, love languages actually mean. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to share this image. So I pull up my phone and after we talk about the five language, love languages, I say, well, actually, this is what the five love, love languages actually mean. So number one, words of affirmation, what it actually means is you're autistic, okay? Acts of service, what it actually means is you have father issues. Receiving gifts, it actually means you're broke. Quality time, it means you have mother issues, <laughs> okay? Physical touch, it means you're a whore. <laughs> so when I show this to the woman and she tell, tells me what, what her top three are and she sees this, she just laughs, laughs her ass off every single time. It works 100% of the time. So from my standpoint, because I said words, touch, and time, I am an autistic whore with mother issues. Okay, so, so that's game number one that you can play on your dates is to go through, ask them what their top three love languages are, and then you can find it online. Um, what I just said, you can probably find some image online or whatever, but uh, uh, anyways, I'm recording with my phone, so I can't show you on my phone, but drop a comment if you'd like me to share that link to that image that shows you know, mother issues, father issues. If you ask for, if, if you're number one, if in your top three love languages is gifts and you're actually broke, that kind of thing. So seriously, it gets them laughing 100% of the time. They think it's fucking funny. Game number two. This one has to do with animals, okay? And you're probably wondering, Silver Bachelor, what's up with you, man? What? Animals? No, I'm not going down that direction, okay? You dirty mind. All right, animals. So how the game works is you first ask them, what's your favorite animal? They will tell you. It doesn't matter what the animal is. And you tell them, doesn't matter. Fish, land, birds, doesn't matter. What's your favorite animal? Then you ask them, okay, what's your second favorite animal? They tell you. And write this down or put it in your phone because you need to come back to this. So then uh, when, when you're on the date, you need to make sure you memorize what she just said. So then you ask her, what's your third favorite animal? And now she's kind of rolling her eyes like, what the hell is this thing? So then you circle back to you and you say, so why is that animal, the first one, important to you? Like, what is it about, the, about that animal that you like? So she will describe that animal, whether it's a panther, a bird, or elephant, whatever. Same thing with animal number two. Same thing with animal number three. You want to get an idea of why did they choose that animal. Maybe that animal represents freedom. Maybe it represents that they're um, persistent, they're independent, whatever. This is all psychological stuff. And it's, 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 it's amazing. It's amazing how accurate this is. So then this is, the, this is the game. So then once you know the three animals, they've given those descriptions of why they chose those three animals in that order, the game goes like this. You say, well, the number one animal that you chose is how people actually see you. Okay. <laughs> so, so that's number one. Uh, hold on a second. I'm just looking at my notes to make sure I get this right. Da. Actually see. Okay. So, all right. So number one, excuse me for a moment because I just, it's been a long day. The number one animal that she chose is how she wants people to see her. So in my case, I chose an elephant. So that's how I want people to see me as an elephant, okay, in terms of characteristics and things. The number two animal is actually how people see you. So number one is how you want people to see you, okay? Number two is actually how they see you. And then number three is, what you actually are. I know it's a bit of a tongue twister, but you need to memorize this one. So the number one is how you want people to see you, okay? Number two is how they actually see you. And number three is what you actually are. So I, I will share my animals. I chose an elephant as number one, so I want people to see me as strong and um, family-oriented, you know, not afraid of anything, right? That's how I want people to see me, according to this game. I ch the second animal I chose is a dolphin, right? And I know you guys are probably laughing. You're like, ah! So this is why this game is hilarious. So 
when I was given my descriptions of why, why do I like dolphins? And of course, you know, because no sharks could mess with them. This is in my mind. I'm thinking no sharks could mess with them and they're funny. So that's a dolphin is actually how people actually see me as though. I want them to see me as an elephant and the strong and, you know, king of the jungle, jungle kind of thing. They actually see me as a dolphin. <laughs> okay. So this, that's why this is funny. And then third, um, I said crocodile and why crocodiles? Because they, um, they, they will adopt the male crocodiles will adopt the orphans that are out there from other, ba other babies. They will adopt them, but they're fearless. They're indestructible, all these things. Um, of course, you know, people think of crocodiles as like, oh man, they're nasty and they're mean and they're vicious and stuff. So the crocodile is what actually I am according to this game. So why this is funny is because she's going to choose these three animals, right? And then she's going to laugh because you're going to say, well, the number one is what you want people to see you as. And she's going to go, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. And then her number two animal is say, well, actually what the, your number two animal is actually what they see you as. <laughs> so if she says, well, number one, I'm a panther. So that's what you want people to see you as. But then she says, number two, I'm a little budgie. So then you say, well, actually, that's how people see you as a cute little budgie. So these are the games. Those are the two games. So the one is the love language game. And number two is the animal game. And I know you guys are probably thinking, oh, it's hokey or whatever. But I'm telling you, when you play these games on the first one or two dates, they laugh their ass off. And women are kind of like little girls in that sense, in that they're very, they like games. They like being teased. And you, they almost see you in a way as like that big brother kind of thing, teasing them, right? So this is a little side note. Women want basically a father figure in their life, a father that they never really had, and a big brother. And I know it sounds weird, but it's true. They like that big brother. Maybe they don't have a brother, but I'm saying they like the fact that men tease. Because women don't tease amongst themselves, but they like to hang out with men because men are funny and they tease. So... This video has gone long enough. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what games do you play on your first few dates to develop attraction.